Greetings, it's Vagram, back again with another episode of Mod Guide. Now, this is part two, an unexpected part two, to early RF power generation. It's kind of branched out into RF power generation in general. Uh, the one thing that you can do with RF is you can draw it from other sources that don't normally uh, generate redstone blocks. Like, technically, mechanism doesn't make RF. It makes joules, its own power system, but it converts it on the way out to redstone blocks. It's built into the mod. Uh, so knowing this, one of the things you can actually do is plug in uh, cables, uh, uh, power conduits from, uh, um, or power duct, whatever they're called, energy ducts from thermal expansion. You can plug those into other sources that make MJ's, Minecraft jewels, build craft power system. And you can harness them into Redstone Flux. So, I have a bevy of information that has been compi compiled and submitted to me by a certain Vexitos, a intrepid viewer of mine, who decided to take it upon himself to do some testing. Now, he's very, very thorough about all of this testing that he has actually gone through. And he's got a long list of numbers and details that is really almost too involved to present in a video itself, but I do think it's worth going on about. Okay, so Vexitos has compiled this very, very in-depth list of information, and I'm going to link in the description for this the actual spreadsheet he sent to me so that you can take a look for it yourself because there's much more information than I can convey accurately in a video, but we can at least skim over it and I can give you the basics. So. We have the redstone engine. This actual whole section here is buildcraft. We have the redstone engine, the sterling engine, and the combustion engine. Three different sets of power that vary in different ways. Now, the redstone engine only requires a redstone signal, whether that be a lever, a torch, a block of redstone, whatever. And it starts winding up and gaining speed. The more speed that it has, the more power it puts out which ranges anywhere from 0.1 RF per tick at the very beginning to 0.8 RF per tick, which means you would need 100 of these to equal one dynamo. It's not real great power return, but hey. Um, Sterling engine. This thing is 10 RF per tick. Now, the Sterling engine actually runs off of burnable fuel, i.e. coal, and one piece of coal can get you 16,000 RF. The only thing that still beats that on the numbers is the actual starter dynamo that you actually make, the uh, combustion dynamo, with thermal expansion. So this actually ties for efficiency. It's a direct copy uh, of the Sterling generator for under I.O. Uh, they have the same numbers. One piece of coal gives you the same on both regards. Uh, the real difference is going to be the materials cost, but we'll go into that in just a minute. Combustion engine. 30 RF per tick if it's running off of oil, 60 RF per tick on fuel, 40 RF per tick on ethanol. Now, the, it handles those three different fuels that you can use a buildcraft refinery to actually make. Now, the redstone engine gains speed over time, ramping up power output as it gains speed. Uh, one piece of glass, one redstone, one iron ingot, four cobblestone, ten wood planks. This is dirt cheap. And honestly, if you were unscrupulous enough or had enough room you could just make a couple of rooms of these. 200 of these would equal 160 RF per tick. And that would be just barely over three stacks of redstone, three stacks of iron ingots. And you'd have power forever, pretty much. No problem. It's kind of weird, but you can do it. Now, the Sterling engine, the Sterling engine burns fuel. As I said, it's actually 16,000 RF for one piece of fuel. Um, same numbers as the Sterling generator from Ender IO. Uh, one piece of glass, one piece of redstone, one iron ingot, 15 cobble, and seven wood planks. Uh, this burning coal, this is still pretty cheap in the grand scheme of things, but it's almost on par cost wise with the ge Sterling Generator from Ender I.O. I think the Sterling Generator from Ender I.O. is only slightly cheaper. So, <clears throat> combustion engine, this thing, this is where it starts getting a little bit pricier. Uh, one glass, one redstone, 12 iron ingots, because you have to make four of them into iron plates in a rolling machine. 
a railcraft rolling machine, and uh, 12 cobblestone, 7 wood planks. So, yeah. Uh, oh, no, no, this one doesn't require the rolling machine. That's actually a railcraft engine, so I'm sorry. Uh, that's just 12 iron ingots, basically. Uh, now, you need a source of fuel and a way to refine the fuel. That means either a fermenter to make the ethanol, or a still, or a tree farm uh, to make ethanol from, and uh, then you also, or you could go the fuel route and either use your oil or a refinery to actually refine the oil into fuel, but some way you need a source of fuel and a way to process the fuel. So, uh, over here in the railcraft section, we have the hobbyist steam engine. Now, this thing is actually not required to use steam. You can actually put fuel, like coal or charcoal, into it, and water. You don't have to actually pipe steam into it. It can make its own steam. Uh, but it is more power efficient if you use steam in it. So, um, in the actual hobbyist steam engine, uh, one piece of coal can heat the engine up to a certain temperature, and it'll give you 32,000 RF on startup. But it has to have a steady supply of water to do that. Um, one piece of coal can, of course heat it up to 300 and 360 degrees Celsius out of 500. But uh, basically, one piece of coal can get this heated up to speed, and it will give you 32,000 RF off of that one. So this is double the efficiency uh, of the actual baseline Stirling engine right here, uh, which I think is the point in terms of like how much RF it'll give you. But if you want to get double the power output of this, you literally need to have steam. And steam means you're piping a boiler into a, a, a using a boiler of some nature uh, from railcraft or some other source of steam to pump it into the engine. That means that you actually have to have a steady supply of steam, and that factors into the cost. So you have to think about that. A commercial steam engine, this is also going to reply, st require a steady supply of steam, which means if you give it a steady supply of steam un uh, um, unrestricted, it's going to be 40 RF per tick, just like there's 80 RF per tick on the industrial steam engine. Now, if we look on these on costs, and we go to the hobbyist steam engine right here, one glass, one redstone, one iron ingot, 12 cobblestone, seven wood planks, 11 gold nuggets. That's where it gets a little bit tricky, but honestly, 11 gold nuggets is only about a bar and a third, a little bit less of gold. That's not that much. So for a little bit of extra gold on top of a normal Sterling in engine and a supply of water from something, then you can get a lot more power output. It gets even better if you can give it steam. So these things are definitely worth the cost. Now you've got the commercial engine directly behind us here. Uh, one glass, one redstone, 12 iron ingots, 12 cobblestone, 7 planks. That sounds about familiar. The only hitch is it's about the same cost as the... Uh, um, Combustion engine, blanked out there for a minute. But, uh, basically, you have to have a steam-generating infrastructure, whether that be a low- or high-pressure boiler, what have you. You have to have a steam infrastructure to get steam to the engine. If it's got a steady supply of steam, then it'll get you uh, 40 RF per tick. Now, industrial steam engine, one glass, one redstone, one iron ingot, 12 cobblestone, Seven wood planks, that's this guy over here, and 12 steel ingots. Four of those steel ingots have to be made into plates. Just like in this one, it has 12 iron ingots. Twelve, four of those 12 actually have to be made into iron plates in a rolling machine. So for these two, there's already equipment that you have to have in order to make them. Other accessories, other machines. Plus, you have to have a steam generating infrastructure. But they're very solid, and they will run and run as long as you can keep them fueled with whatever actual source of steam you can give them. So, uh, let's move on to the final category. This is the forestry engines, and this actually has one of the most complicated, as you can see right there. Uh, the clockwork engine, it goes anywhere from 5 to 15 RF per tick. Now, the clockwork engine is a little complicated. You have to right-click to wind it, and you'll see it change color. And basically, you don't know... It's hard for me to tell because I'm in creative mode, but if I was in survival mode, if I would have wound it up to that high, 
and kept winding it, I'd take damage from it. You can actually kill yourself using this if you're on low health and you wind it up. But you see, it's changing color. This takes no fuel. The only fuel is right-clicking. That's it. And the more tightly wound the engine is, the more power you get. That's where the range comes. So if you wind it all the way up, which means winding it fully, and then winding it an extra step and taking that half heart of damage, that's when you know you fully wound it up. That's how you get 15 RF per tick. And that's how Vexados tested it. So we have the peat-fired engine next. This is 10 RF per tick if you're burning peat, uh, which comes from a peat bog, forestry. Uh, the other option is bituminous peat. Uh, bituminous peat. Yeah, I'm going to go with bituminous peat. And our uh, 20 RF per tick doubles the power output with a couple of little extra steps. Uh, the real complicated, and the last one on this list, is the biogas engine. Now, this thing is very, very versatile. It's really one of the shining stars of the for forestry power sources. This thing does 10 RF per tick if you just pipe in water and lava. That's it. 10 RF per tick. If you do honey from bees and lava, then you get 10 RF per tick. But the lava in that case is only used to start it up. It's only used to warm the engine up, which means you only use lava if you turn the engines on but leave them going all the time. If it's on, off, on, off, every time they turn on, it's going to use a little bit more lava to heat up. Same goes for biomass. 50 RF per tick off of biomass, which is plant matter, and lava, but the lava is only used to warm the engine up initially. And then there's 50 RF per tick off of seed oil and lava. Same thing, the lava is only used for warm up. So the only difference, different mode here is water plus lava. That 10 RF per tick is a primitive mode. It's very simple. And it burns the lava as a fuel in that case, just like it does the water. But all the other ones, the lava is only used for startup and very sparingly, only a little bit. These things have great fuel efficiency. They run for a really long time. Uh, one unit of fuel, basically, uh, if you do one unit of seed oil, you'll get 75,000 RF. Yeah. One unit of seed oil, basically, I believe that's one bucket, gets you 75,000 RF. If you do, and a unit of lava, of course, to start it up. Um, if you do biomass, it'll get 125,000 RF. Honey, 50,000 RF, or water, and a constant lava draw is 10,000 RF. So that's using a little amount a measured unit of fuel for each one of these. Basically, you could do 10,000 RF from one unit, 50,000, 125,000, or 75,000. That's very, very cool. It's like over here on the peat-fired engine, the peat-fired engine will give you 50,000 RF for one unit of peat or 120,000 for one unit of bituminous peat. It's very impressive numbers. Very, very good. Uh, even the clockwork engine, if you wind it up fully, it'll give you 40,000 RF. It's just going to give it to you 15 RF at a time. And it's going to slow down as it unwinds, which means you get a burst of power at the beginning, and then it slowly starts to give less and less and less until it stops. So these are very, very interesting options, very different. I think the clockwork engine is a great early game option. We can look at that right here. One glass, one redstone, one iron ingot. Eight cobblestone, eight wooden planks, four copper ingots, and four gold ingots. That's where they lose me. I really do love this power source, but four gold ingots for something you have to wind by hand. Uh, and you can technically die by if you wind it too tight on low health. I'm a little lost on that four gold ingots part, but the rest of it has me. I think it's a great deal. The peat-fired engine is 11 copper ingots, 7 wood, 12 cobblestone, 1 iron, 1 redstone, 1 glass. This is a hell of a deal. The only hitch is... You have to have a constant supply of peat from a peat bog. You're going to have to make bituminous peat if you want to really get extra bang for your buck. Uh, biogas engine. One glass, one redstone, one iron ingot, 12 cobblestone, 7 wood planks, 11 bronze ingots. This is actually a really good deal, especially considering that it is so flexible and so versatile. You can make a whole bunch of these and run them off water and lava and then slowly switch them over to seed oil or biomass as you develop your infrastructure I mean, without having to rebuild your engines. That's a run hell of a deal. It's something to think about. So I would actually like to thank Vexados again for compiling all this information from Buildcraft, Forestry, 
and Railcraft, respectively, it is a valuable stock of information. Again, I'm going to link in the video to the spreadsheet that he's actually passed out to me that's got all these numbers, all the details, and all the little rules and regulations on exactly how he tested it and exactly what the efficiency numbers are. It's worth a look. If you're looking for alternate sources of power that you haven't explored before, maybe you've just come in with mechanism, thermal expansion, and Ender I.O., and maybe you want to try something different, something a little bit more established and old school for a change. I say, give it a go. Take a look at it. It's worth exploring. This is Vagram. Thank you very much for joining me. Thank you very much for spending your time watching my video. Bye-bye.